All right, let's say we have this wheel and we have this rope and we give this, this uh, rope, we pull on it and we give, we give it an acceleration uh, which is equal to 4t meters per second squared. We're told that this, this uh, system is initially at rest so its initial velocity is zero, its initial angular velocity is zero, and we're asked to figure out its angular velocity as a function of time and its angular position as a function of time. And we're going to give an angular position of this point P, we're just gonna call it uh, some theta. Now, let's look at point P. Point P is on the outside of this disk, so the path that it travels is this circular path. And since it travels on a circular path, it's going to have some normal component of acceleration and it's going to have some tangential component of acceleration. We know that its normal component is going to point back in, in towards the radius of the, the path it's moving on and the tangential component is going to be, well, tangent to the, its motion and it's going to look something like this. So its tangential component is also going to be this 14 meters per second square. So how do we go about this? How do we go about this problem? Well, we know that we have an alternate expression for tangential acceleration. And if we call this our positive direction, we have our tangential acceleration is going to be equal to our angular acceleration times r. And r is going to be the position from the, the fixed axis to the point we're looking at. And this fixed axis, it, it's rotating around this point O. So this, this is just going to be this radius and this radius is point two. Uh, we don't know what our angular acceleration is, but we do know what our uh, tangential acceleration is, and that's four t. So if we, we solve this expression for our angular acceleration, we get our angular acceleration is equal to 20 t radians per second squared. Now, if we look at this expression, uh, this, this angular acceleration is going to be a function of time because there's a t in this expression. So we cannot use, so we're not able to use those uh, sort of kinematic expressions are those uh, expressions we have for rotation about a fixed axis because this acceleration is not constant. It's a function of time right here. All right, so we have this formula for angular acceleration. We know the angular acceleration is going to be equal to the derivative of the angular velocity with respect to time. We know that our angular acceleration from right here is 20t and that's equal to the angular velocity with respect, the derivative of the angular velocity with respect to time. So we can separate our variables and we can integrate. When we separate our variables, this dt comes over to the other side. So we have 20t dt uh, is equal to uh, d omega. And we want to integrate both sides. So when we integrate this side, we're going to integrate from a final time t because we're trying to find an expression, just a, a regular expression for the angular velocity as a function of time to an initial time of zero. And for our, our bounds on our angular velocity, we're going to integrate from a final uh, angular velocity, which is just going to be omega, to an initial angular velocity, which is zero. We know that this initial angular velocity is zero because we were told the system starts at rest. So when we perform this integration, we get uh, 20t squared over 2 evaluated from t to 0 is equal to omega, which is evaluated from omega to 0. Now, this can be simplified a little bit, and if we plug in our bounds, we get uh, 10t squared is equal to omega. So right here, we have our function... Uh, we have this answer. We have omega as a function of time. Omega is this angular velocity, and time is part of the expression. And we also know that uh, this is our positive direction, because we stated so in this part of the equation. 
So now that we have an uh, a expression for omega, we can figure out what our expression for our angular position as a function of time would be. We know that omega, it's the same sort of steps. We know that omega is equal to the derivative of the angular position with respect to time. We have this uh, expression for omega. We know it's equal to 10 t squared. So if we, we look at this equation, again, we want to separate our variables and we want to integrate. So we have, we have 10 t squared dt is equal to d uh, theta. And we just need to figure out our bounds on our integral. Well, we're going to go from a final angular, uh, angular position to an, from an initial angular position, and we're going to just call this zero. So how, how far we move, and again, time is going to be from zero to t. Now, if we perform this integral, I'll pick a different color, we get 10 t cubed over three, uh, evaluated from t to zero, is equal to uh, theta, which is evaluated from theta to zero. And uh, we plug in our bounds, we're going to get, we can't really simplify this anymore, so this is what uh, theta is. Theta is going to be equal to 10 t cubed over three, and this is our positive direction. So this becomes our, our angular position as a function of time, and this is our angular velocity as a function of time.